Hello, Ken Spriggs here. I am returning to my commission builds, working on those and showing video um, of the build for that. This would be uh, officially part four of the pod build. Uh, so what I'm actually doing is I have three commissions that I'm working on simultaneously. I have two of the large um, pod, EVA pod from Mobius from 2001. And I have uh, one build that I am building of another tiny little pod that's 3D printed from Shapeways that I'm making a little mini diorama with uh, in the little display case. Uh, so I'm working on those simultaneously and, um, and making some progress on each of those. So first we're gonna take a look at the little mini pod from Shapeways. And um, this one's gonna be a little bit different I'm going to be displaying it. Uh, if you recall my last video, it was a while ago, maybe about a year or two ago, that I was working on one. And I had scratch built a little top of the command sphere that it was displayed on. Uh, this particular one is going to be displayed on the antenna array. And I used uh, the actual parts from one of the kits that I have of the Discovery and, um, and adapted that to work as part of the display for this this tiny little pod which will also be lit up and have a little figure inside of it so all right let's go ahead and take a look All right, so for this little mini pod, I'm taking a little different approach. So instead of doing it over the command sphere, I'm doing it over the antenna array. So as I showed in previous stills, this is from the actual discovery model. I built this section of it and I built it so that it would fit inside of this case because this is a case that I used previously on my other one and I like it, it's a nice one. It has this nice little dome that goes over top of it. So in order for it to fit, I could only really do one section of the cargo modules. And I decided to do these ones. And then this part, I cut it off right at that tip and I just glued on some styrene and sanded it smooth. And then this is basically how it's gonna be. It's gonna be diagonal. And I'm kind of thinking of having it like this and then at some point right around in here is where the post is going to come up and have the pod which is hovering up above it so the pod will be sort of centered it'll be a little bit back from center probably coming up this way and be hovering right up above it and um and facing this way because you want to see he doesn't want the astronaut outside of the pod. I suggested possibly doing one suspended between it, but he decided he just wanted um, Dave inside of it. So we're, we're doing the, the scene where Dave first left the ship in the pod. And for the first time, he's trying to come down and replace the AE-35 unit. And so the pod itself is going to be about up here above the, above the array where he would then be getting out of it and coming down to change it. So I'm going to have the pod facing forward like I did on the first one I did. Uh, obviously, nothing, no, no Frank in the claws because we're not doing that scene. 
and um, but it's going to be lit up and it's going to have the figure of Dave inside of it with his helmet on because it's from the initial shot so all right so that looks pretty cool so the way I have it set up now this can actually fit over top of it it's it's a snug little fit but it should be okay if I can get it on there hold on a second all right there you go now obviously the antenna ray is going to be attached onto the base it'll be permanent and the pod will have its own separate um, brass tube coming up with the lights because the battery will be underneath the power of the, the pod because the pod will light up. So I'll make sure there's enough clearance even if I have to sand off a little bit more of those ends. But you'll, you can see how that's going to fit. Sorry for the reflection there. That'll be pretty cool. And of course I'm going to be painting this just like I did the Discovery. <coughs> so it's going to have the the overall gray and then it's going to have the different panels and i still have some of the decals left over or not decals the vinyl masking set from the from aztec dummy that i can use to put some extra detail into the cargo modules and that kind of thing and i still have to finish putting on the rest of the antenna array and that kind of thing so all right Alright, so the parts that I had already put together, I went ahead and got some neutral gray on, as you can see, which I'm using this Vallejo neutral gray. So the paint scheme idea is that I start with this neutral gray, which is a darker gray. The very end product, of course, is going to be a very light gray, but it's going to have some different patterns in it. So what I do is I start with a darker gray. I'll just lightly, well, first of all, let me back up a second. So I completed the dishes and I put those on. Very, very thin, fragile, fiddly little antenna array parts. As you can see, I broke a big one and I broke a small one, which luckily I had extras and spares. So I was able to go ahead and, and put those on or I could have glued these, but that would have been a challenge as well. So I got those glued on. I also patched up that little space there. You can see the white styrene. For some reason that is open. I don't know why they didn't make that solid. You can see a little bit of the edge of it there. And that'll blend in once I get it painted the neutral gray. All right, so all of those are glued on. I'm gonna go ahead and um, get another coat of neutral gray on. Once that's on and it dries, I'm gonna lightly mist over it with a white, flat white, to get me sort of a base color which is a lighter gray, but not exactly where I want it to be. Then I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, Aztec Dummy painting masks, which uh, allow me to detail these panels right here, the cargo modules. So I'll go over those and I'll put down a dark gray and a light gray, or a white, I'm sorry, pure white, and, um, and either a dark gray or more of the neutral gray. And then we'll do a final blending coat. But. And here is the base coat on the antenna array. So after I went over it with the um, neutral gray, I went back over it with a misting of flat white. And I actually used Tamiya flat white because, let me get that right here. Because um, I do like these Montelayer from Vallejo, but they're they're naturally just glossy. Not super glossy, but they're kind of a, a mid-range. So what you do is you buy separate, like a satin varnish or a matte varnish. And you mix it in, or you paint it over top of it, and then it brings it to that particular shade. So they don't sell just like a gloss black, gloss flat black, flat white, gloss white, that kind of thing. So, so what I'm going to do now is I had leftover sheets from the Aztec Dummy set for the Discovery. And so I have this piece right here, some random detail. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting it over top of the outside of these 
panels. Now, I'm not going to worry about the bottom because you're not going to see it. This is going to be permanently attached onto the base and it's not going to be removable, but you will see these. You're going to, you're going to see these parts here. Uh, you don't really do it on the dish and you don't do it on those other parts or the, the end smooth parts. So, all right. So let me get and get that applied on. What I'm going to use is I'm going to use gray, which is pretty dark. And I'm just going to use white. And I'm going to go over a couple of passes with this. I'll start with probably the white, go over a couple passes, and then I'll flip it around. And after it dries for a little bit, flip it around and do the dark gray, uh, mainly because it's easier to clean out the white and put gray in instead of vice versa. And then go ahead and put some detail on this. And once I get that on there and it dries, then we'll do a final misting of some more flat white, which will bring it up to the final look that I want it to be. All right. All right, and then there is all the detail using the paint masks to put onto this. And obviously right now it's really stark because I'm gonna go back over it with a white blending coat in order to blend it back down again. And I'll do the whole entire thing, including the dish and the other parts that don't have the, the detail on it as well. And you can see the comparison, there's the bottom that I didn't paint because you won't see it. But I did try to get inside of those little edges there Of course all the surfaces I did not put it over the ends where you have those extruding parts because I didn't think that would be accurate and on the inside there either I did do the top part on the front and the back so okay so the next thing I will do to finish up this is just to go over it with the misting of the Tamiya flat white blend it all back down uh, this is a little trickier because you want to just mist it at a distance, just slightly do it, and slowly build to the color you want it to be. And I have to evenly go over all the parts of this in order to make sure that it all looks like one homogenous part. So when you look further away, it'll look like it's all one color, but when you get closer, you should still be able to make out some of that detail that I painted in. So, all right, but looking pretty good. All right, and there is the completed uh, antenna array. I thought I put the blending coat over top of all the panels. So you can see if I go distance away, it just looks like it's a light gray. When you get in closer, you can make out individual little details. So it definitely adds some more depth and character to it. But you don't want them to be so stark and so obvious that that they don't look natural. And of course, like I said, this will go down on here. And then the pod will be coming up from behind it. All right, so this part is all done. All right, so I started to light block and paint the little mini pod and uh, now remember, this pod is in clear or translucent material. Now this I, I primered so you can't tell. This is the rest of it. But it's translucent, so in order to make sure that only light comes through where I want it to for the controls, uh, you have to do a lot of light blocking with black. So what I did first of all was I took some micro mask, which is like a rubber liquid masking medium, and I went in with some, some, uh, I had to wear some of those magnifier glasses and I just took a little toothpick and I just dabbed it onto some of the controls. I'm not gonna zoom in just yet. I'll show you when I take it off. I dabbed over mostly just the display screens, the, the biggest ones, because they were, it's actually quite accurately detailed. It's pretty amazing how, how they created this, but 
it has the the six displays so that the two in the front and two on either side and then the controls are actually pretty accurate too but um i mainly wanted to get the displays so they were a little more squared off and i so i put micro mask over it before i sprayed on the black paint and then um once i put that on um, i'm going to go ahead and peel it off so let me do that and then i'll show you how those look all right so i painted on the flat black over the controls then i went back over and i removed the micro mask that i put on for the displays and you can see they're definitely a little more detailed a little more squared off but they're still very very tiny so these two center ones these ones over here on the left and there's some on the right the right one's not quite as pronounced and don't pay any attention to that little hole right there that's where the pilot sits and also that little section underneath the controls you're not really going to see or actually i can paint some red on that and get a little bit of light spill from red on there so okay so i went through and i scratched off lightly some of the other controls sorry for the shakiness but it's so close cover that up so let me get and put the roof on and show you how that's going to look all right and there's with the uh with the roof on so you can look inside and see that you can see quite a bit of the controls through that window which is the only way you're going to see them. And once I get some color on them, they'll really start to pop. So, all right, so let me go ahead and get on some Tamiya clears and add some color to those controls. All right, so there it is with the roof on. So you can see you can move around and see quite a bit of that. Now you're not going to see the displays through it because they're like straight down. You can kind of almost catch them that way, but they're they're not that obvious. So, but definitely a lot of detail and a lot of busyness coming through through the cockpit. So pretty cool. All right. So now that I got the lights done inside, I went ahead and I painted over the um, the pod with uh, some silver first. And what I did was I made a little mask. See it right here. I just made an oval on my vinyl cutter, made some masks and I put it over top of the black for the window. So it kept it masked. I'm gonna have to touch it up just a little bit. Uh, but first I painted it silver. Uh, then I went over it with white because it's easier to paint white over silver than black. So I wouldn't get it to be gray. So there's the completed exterior for now for the outside of the pod with the white, like I said. And um, I'll still have to do the side earmuffs. Now, this is a cool design. So the way it's designed is, let me get that for you. Let me get those side muffs and I'll show you how those are designed. All right, so the way that it's designed is that you have those little side parts sticking out and you have holes in the, the muff parts. I don't know what they're actually called, but I call them like ear muffs or side muffs. So um, all of the parts that are black, including those, those squared off parts around the ring and those circles in the middle, they would be painted black on here. And then this part would be painted white and you just clip it on over top of it. And it holds it in place and um, and then the, the black parts will be pre-painted. So you don't have to worry about doing the extra little parts. So it's really cool. It's a nice design. Uh, there are the little claws. There's a the little figure of Dave Bowman with his helmet on. So we're reenacting the scene when he first goes out to replace the AE-35 unit. And he has his helmet this time. And he doesn't have legs. His legs are cut off because he wouldn't fit inside with legs. So but I will get him painted up as well. All right, so now that I've got this painted, I can go ahead and start working on the lighting. I'll get that completed before I um, I do the rest, like with the earmuffs and things, because I'm gonna have to be taking the top off before, you know, working on that. 
and I'll also need to put in obviously Dave Bowman once I paint him and get him inside too and he'll be lit up from inside also so all right all right so progress coming along really well on that little mini pod uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the larger EVA pods and I started working on doing more of the controls and uh, I'm going to show you some time lapse of uh, removing masks from the little controls that I use from the Aztec Dummy masking set. All right, so I removed all of the masks off of this bottom section as I showed in the time lapse. So it's not really that difficult. You just have to do each one individually. You get a few that have a little bit of over paint. What I can do is I can take a piece of sandpaper and I can just go back and lightly sand over any of the spots that I want to get any of the more, more of the paint off of it. But once they're lit up, you really are not going to notice that. And obviously, they're all going to be different colors. So, all right. So this one is done. So I have to work on the other side panels and go through and get all those pulled off. And then I'll be ready to start doing some, uh, some lighting from behind on that. So, okay. All right, so now that I have all of the masks removed from the little buttons on each of these side panels, um, I just have them set up here to show how they fit, but they're still separate pieces. So this comes off. This is all one section, as I showed before, and so is the left side or the right side if you're inside of it. Okay. And... Um, so what I'm working on now is I'm revisiting the idea of the light boxes and trying to do something a little bit different than what I did before. Same effect. I'm going to get the same effect. I'm going to get the same different color buttons using the clear styrene that I did before. If you watched my previous video uh, and, um, and the same cool effect. Uh, but I want to try to simplify it. This is the original one that I did. And this was a lot of work and a lot of redoing, and you can see just the complexity of it. So different little light boxes, a little circuit board there that's kind of messy. My soldering skills aren't the greatest. I can do the basics, and I've gotten a lot better. But the simpler that I make it, the better it's going to be. So I don't want to. I don't want to have all of these complicated boxes right here. I want to have it more like this. So one box for this section, one for this section, and then I want to do one for this whole entire section, including the fact that, that this piece here goes up. So it would still outline this entire section and curve around for this one in order to reduce a lot of the problems um, that I had with this one and making it more difficult than it needed to be. So I went back and I watched Lou Dalmeso's build of the pod, which he did in 2019. He did a fantastic job. He did a great job. Um, obviously it's his Aztec dummy mask that I'm using to get these cool buttons. So Lou is, is fantastic. He is the guru, the go-to, the master. So he does all this ahead of time 
to show the best way to do it so so that we don't have to. Now, sometimes I've deviated a bit from some of his things, but I wanted to go back and watch his video again and kind of get some better ideas. And I like his approach better than the one I did uh, with, the, with the solid boxes. That's what he did. He used just one whole box on each of these, and he made his thicker as well. So mine are pretty thin. He made his about a half inch thick. And there's plenty of room to accommodate for that. I'll show you here in a moment. I'll put this together and and then put it inside the exterior. And I'll show you that there's plenty of room. So I have to get out of the mindset that I had with models like the Discovery, which had a small command sphere and a lot of lights and a little bit of room, not a lot of room to work with. And I had to to make do with that. So I had to use thinner wires, the magnet wire, you know, and I used a lot more LEDs versus using any kind of strip lights. I didn't use any strip lights in that. So this one is not a problem with space. So I need to utilize that space and use materials that are going to work better in this type of application because there's so many lights, so many controls that I really have to try to keep the wires down to a minimum to avoid any kind of short circuits or breaking of wires. So what that would also mean is I'm not going to use this magnet wire, this thinner wire, as you can see, because I don't have to. Uh, it, it's necessary in smaller, more compact kits, but there's plenty of room here. So I want to use this wire, a lot thicker. You have a nice, uh, and it's braided, it's, it's, you know, multiple strand copper wire inside, uh, and it's thick and hardy. That's, that's the point. So I can use these a lot easier if I have one panel and then just simply wire each of the LEDs around uh, one after another till I get one set of wires coming out of each panel. So I have one, two, three. Three panels, three sets of wires. Uh, if I need to, I can go in and put some individual LEDs here and there if I need to do a certain effect or something or get a brighter look but i think i will manage to to get the light i need by covering the entire area with a light box and make it thicker and what he did also is he had some led strips on the sides of the panel because it's a half an inch thick and he had some on the back or the top here is if it's reversed like on the reverse of this pointing down so some pointing in from the side some pointing down and he could easily isolate it. Plus he could, he had plenty of room to work with. Like when I did this, I was making little panels that would cover just certain buttons and try to fiddle with the light. It was just too much. It was too much, it was too complicated. I had to do it several times to fix it. And you know, it just added to the frustration and then the, the final product. So, I mean, it looks good. Let me plug it in and show you this real quick. So it looks great, but I can do the same effect by simply doing it simplified. All right, so here is the lit panel that I had already made. And the, um, the camera does make it look brighter and more washed out. It looks a lot better in person. For example, the displays don't look that bad. They look more like this when I get closer. Now, we did have a few issues. You can see that little spot down at the bottom left corner, a few little spots. That's the trouble with these overlays. You scratch it at all and the light's gonna shine through. Um, in addition, the, um, the, button, the button graphics, I'm not gonna use them. Uh, only the, the really bright ones like the yellow or the, or the clear white are gonna, are gonna show them. You can't see them on the blue. You can't see them on the, well, I don't have any green on this one, but they don't show up on the other colors, so. But um, I am going to do the same effect as far as cutting the decals for the rest of these and getting them on the way they're supposed to be. All right, so I can get the same effect, but instead I can just really simplify it and just put a big light box behind each section and just put a bunch more lights in if I need to or isolate them. So, all right, so let me get this put together. And let me show you inside of the exterior and, uh, and just kind of show you the, the space that I'm working with. 
All right, so here is the ceiling piece, which is all one piece, taped onto the side panels and the bottom control panels. And just sitting on this little tub here, which is supposed to represent the floor. It's not all that stable, <laughs> as you can see. But you can see inside, kind of see how that's gonna to fit together. Now the ceiling, of course, is gonna be red. And then it's gonna have its own little panels in these circles. It's gonna have a panel in that top ceiling part. It's gonna have its own light panels up here, which are just gonna be red. So not anywhere near the complexity in the ceiling as you have in the base, in the bottom controls. Uh, and then of course, there are some back walls that go on here as well that wrap around and make an opening right here. And you have controls, a little bit of controls on the back panels as well. But again, not as complicated. This is the bread and butter. This is the main difficulty of this kit in the fact that you have so many buttons that you're trying to light. This thing's literally lit up like a Christmas tree. And um, like a Christmas tree, sorry. <laughs> I know it's near, it's it's late in January, but uh, I'll take it down soon. I'd like to get my my use out of my tree. I was going to do it this past weekend, but I decided to hold off for now. I just wasn't feel like, feeling like it. But anyway, I digress. So I want to kind of get an idea of how it's all going to fit together and then giving me an idea of how the light boxes are going to be able to work. And it's just taped together. It's not, it's not permanently attached or anything. All right, so it's actually going to be more tilted like this. It's going to be straight up. But obviously, I'm going to have light boxes here, here, here. And then there's ones underneath, but I'm going to have to cut out a piece of this on both sides to accommodate uh, getting the light boxes to fit. And I'll play with that a little bit. And Lou also went over that in his video too. But this kind of gives you an idea of how it all looks. And it's going to be a self-contained unit, of course. And so this will all be completed. All the light boxes, all the painting, all the wiring. I'll even get the figure inside because it's going to be very difficult to put him in after the fact. So all the interior is going to be done before I put this inside of the exterior and seal it up and so the idea that i'm having is i'm not going to paint the outside at all because there's a, a big seam you got to fix across the top uh, so what i'll end up doing is is getting everything put together i'll be able to mask off the window and the part that's going to be black the outer uh, circle around the window and then just paint the outside of it white which is all it is is just white with some accents and do that after the fact and then that way i won't i won't mar up any of the things so we'll we'll go over that much later of course but uh let me go ahead and put this inside the exterior and kind of give you an idea of of how that's going to work and how that's all going to fit now i just noticed too that i'm going to have to do something with these of course so this is going to have its own light box which again shouldn't be a problem I mean, it gets kind of close to this edge. I could always cut this edge here. It doesn't serve any useful purpose, just so I'll be able to put a nice light box around that to light up those controls as well. So, all right. All right, so here's a mock-up of the outer shell of the pod with the inner controls, not all of them, but the main walls, including the ceiling inside. So Lou had done the same thing on his video and I just wanted to put it together so I can get a, a person, you know, personal perspective on it and just kind of get an idea of the size that I'm working with. So let me turn it around to the side. Pardon the giant furnace blowing in the background. I got a new furnace a few months ago and very, very efficient, very powerful, but it's rather noisy when it's running. So, okay. So here's the side. Now, this is gonna have the side muffs on it, which are gonna give even more room because they're extended out. So there's already tons of room in here, but there's gonna be even more 
you know, with the outer air muff that is gonna be going on. So I don't have to really worry about the main controls. So here's the front one, plenty of space in here. Here's this one, no issues at all, no issues at all. So this would be three different panels, including, well, the top. So this would have a panel encompassing this whole part as I showed. Plenty of room in there to accommodate it. Uh, there's still plenty of room for the headlights, all this open space, no problem at all. There is a little bit of uh, room taken up from the arm part, which comes in through here, but again, no problem. Both of the headlights are gonna have easy accessibility to put wiring into there. Uh, the front, as you can see, lots of open room in front of here, because obviously you have the how eye in the front. Uh, I don't know that there's any other lights on that, just the how one, you know, which is certainly important to put in there. All right. The only ones that are gonna have some difficulty, a little bit tight, are gonna be ones in the ceiling. So you can see, for example, this panel right here. It's, it's snug, but there's some room. I could definitely work out a, um, a little light box that's flat enough. And that just glows red. There's one on either side, and there's one in the back over top. It's kind of hard to see it, but it's, it's right up under here. So similar thing, there's space between the top of this and that roof. So it's certainly able to be done. Here's looking in through the back door. And the controls. Right. And then likewise over on the other side, same situation. So plenty of room, plenty of room, plenty of room to do all of these. Now. The bottom part, I'm gonna to have to cut some of this out and Lou showed that in his video because you have to get underneath because there are lights, there are controls underneath that have to light up. So these controls on the bottom part over here, or what Lou was calling the wishbone. This kind of is sort of shaped like a wishbone. So yeah, so these ones, in order to be able to get to or to have light boxes with no issues, I'm going to have to cut a little bit off of this here. It's not a big deal. It's not really supported by it that much, so it doesn't really hurt anything as far as getting that, getting that taken care of. Not as many lights on the wishbone, so that's not a problem either. Um, there's also, you can see it through this part, there's a a light panel that lights here and one on the other side. Uh, this has a bit of a rounded inset, so I think I'll have to cut some of that out in order to, to not block that. And then there's one straight up in the ceiling, which is really hard to see. I don't have it up in there right now, but straight up in that hole in the ceiling. There's some lights, and then there's certainly some panels in the back that light up also. So, all right. But definitely putting this together gives me a little better perspective of the kind of room I'm working with. So that's why I think it's going to be a whole lot easier and more simplified if I take the approach that Lou did, that he eventually came to after trial and error as well, like I did, where he has one panel, one panel, one panel, and that's it. Now, he did have a separate little panel for the, for the screens. I'm going to play with that and see if I even need to do that. Um, I did that on the other panel that I did originally. I had a separate one, but um, I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible and avoid having too many complicated light boxes and too many wires. The wiring is the main thing. The wiring is the biggest issue because that's where you're going to have a problem. If it breaks, you can get a short. This is all gonna be sealed. I have to fix this seam when it's done. The, the side muffs don't have to be glued on per se, but it would be very hard to get in there and fix a short on 
the control wiring, especially when you're talking about boxes. Even if I left these removable, which would be tricky, it would still be hard to get in here and work on that since this has to be glued in place and attached and everything else. So I don't want to have to have to deal with that. So when it's done and sealed up, that's going to be it. And I don't want to have to try to go back in and deal with any kind of um, issues with wiring. So I definitely want to use thicker gauge wire instead of the magnet wire, which is more prone to breaking. Uh, and that would be certainly easier to do if I'm going to do it this other way where I just have strip lights connected inside one light box and then, you know, and connected together and then one set of wires coming off of one of them and coming out. So I would have one, two, three sets of wires, stick wires, and then I can connect them together um, and just have a, a single set and then do that as sub-assembly. So, all right, so that's the idea. And then certainly I'm, I'm picking up some other ideas from Lou's video that helps me to understand kind of the order in which you need to put things together. That you want to be careful how you go about it because you could run into problems as far as, um, as trying to get them to fit right if you don't have them put in a certain sequence. So I do like the fact that I have the side panels as one section on either side. Now, when he did his, he attached these back walls onto the wishbone. So he had that as one sub-assembly, you know, of course, with the lights and everything and all wired up. And then he did the other ones, and I can do those as separate ones. Uh, I may have to cut off some tabs because some of the tabs that go into the back walls it's hard to position them in place like these ones right here but i could snip those off and that way i just run it up against a smooth edge but i'll play with it so certainly i'll fit all of these first before you know doing any of that but i like the idea of lighting the bottom and the back as a sub-assembly the back walls, uh, the two entire side sections as another sub-assembly and then attaching them together and connecting up the wires. Uh, the lights on the ceiling will be a lot less complicated and pretty much those can all be put into and wired into the ceiling before I seal them up inside of the exterior and the headlights as well. So the headlights will be their own thing and they'll probably be wired into the how and the front and then connect it together. So those will be a lot simpler to handle. And um, and some of those I won't even use strip lights. I won't, might end up using SMDs or that kind of thing. It might be easier to try to do so. All right. All right, so I'm using uh, my styrene sheet. And this is 0 0.020 thickness. And what I'm doing is creating the larger light box, as I said, to go around it. So it isn't glued in place, it's just tacked in the corners. What I did was, when I put this on, I just tacked this corner, this corner, uh, and then I was able to glue these on. And then I tacked the corner down here and here, so I glued the piece down on the bottom. Just letting it set up completely and harden, and then I'll go ahead and uh, pry that loose from here with the idea that I'm going to have like a strip of lights coming along here to light this section. I'm going to have probably ones up in here on the top because remember this is going to have a cover. It's going to have to be curved somewhat but that's okay. I can I can fit that. I'm also going to have to trim that piece right there as you can see it's a little a little bit longer. It's kind of hard when you get to the angles and it's it's curving, but everything else is pretty close. That's the only part that, that kind of stuck out a little bit. I can fix that. And then what I did was I put it onto the bottom and I'll put it on there now and show you to make sure that I had enough room to be able to, uh, to fit that box. And what I ended up having to do is to cut off 
pretty much all of that. I don't think I'll need to cut that little bit off there because it's not really going to be in the way, but I cut all that off. So you can see over here, that isn't cut off as much, but once I work on the other side, I'll probably have to do that as well. And as long as it fits down into those little holes right there, I can seal the outside so you're not going to see it. So let me put this onto here and I'll show you how that's going to work. There you go. So the, um, the top, of course, and the side, it doesn't matter. They're not going to be in the way of anything, but the bottom has to fit inside of there, and it does. This part over here as well. But it's tricky because you have to get close enough. You can see that there are those little indentations. Those are areas that have the light buttons. And the same with over here and this edge over here. I also had to, to um, cut out a little bit of that little part there where they join because it wasn't allowing these ones on the bottom to uh, to be lit up. They were getting covered up. So, okay. All right. So that's going to work out pretty good, I think. I mean, I won't know until I get the lights, the, the um, strip lights onto it and see how evenly it lights it. And then we'll kind of go from there. Uh, I'm hoping that I can use the strip lights to also light up those two monitor panels. I have to play with that and see how it goes. Um, but the idea is certainly with, um, come on, get off of there. Okay, so with, um, with having this whole area to work with, I can certainly put strip lights along the side, like right here. And then when I want to do certain areas, I can have, you know, strip lights on this back part, as I said. So I can have one coming along here. I can have a couple coming down through here. So I can play with it. I don't even have to glue them on permanently just yet. Once I get the bottom made, I'll position them in different places because they're self-sticking, self-adhesive. See how they look, and I can move them. They should be a far enough distance from these to diffuse properly. So I'm not getting any kind of hot spots and that kind of thing. So, okay. All right, so here are two of the completed light boxes for this section. Uh, I um, made two, obviously, because I'm doing two at once. And it's easier once I get the, the parts for the one, I just duplicate it. So I took one of them and I went ahead and put some LED strip tape around it and soldered it into two wires to kind of get an, an idea of a test. I just have it in uh, an adapter plug for now and I'm using uh, nine volts on an adapter. I have a variable adapter. I can change the settings from, uh, from like three up to 12 volts. Uh, so I can run this either at 9 volts or 12 volts. We'll see how it, it ultimately ends up being. But um, let me go ahead and show you. And I just have these around the perimeter. So what I will have eventually is, and this is not the right size yet, but I'll have another piece on the back, of course. And I'll have some on the inside pointing down also to make it brighter. But let me show you how this works, at least with just this amount on it. And it works pretty well. And then for now, I just put the clear part in for the uh, d displays and I put some white styrene I taped on the back so the tapes going to interfere with some of the light but I'll give you an idea what that's going to look like so let me put that on there and plug it in we'll take a look at that all right there we go so it's coming through brighter in some places and again where you see those looking yellow that's because of the tape so that's what the the clear styrene the clear colored styrenes are going to do for me it's gonna give me different colors, but obviously the tape is yellow, so it's showing it yellow. Uh, now, it doesn't have a back on it, so a lot of the light is spilling out, but it's pretty bright. But that's just initially. So that initial uh, look, and you can see compared to the ones on the right that aren't lit up at all, it definitely is getting a lot of light just from those surrounding SMDs. So once I get more over top of the, um, or on the, the back part that'll be behind it. 
and get a back on it and light block. It'll it'll do a lot of light. It's definitely going to do what I want it to do. But keep it nice and simple with just the one light box per big section. So it'll be a lot easier. And it's also given a lot of light to those monitors. So what I'm going to be using and what I have tested on the first one is this backlight film. And this has some things on it. It has one of the ones I had tested. So if I put this on there, you can see that that'll work also. So the only difference might be that I might have to do more diffusion. Like I said, I already have some white styrene behind that to diffuse the light. Just so you're not getting that much of a of an issue. Part of that's probably the tape that's on there, the back of it too. But that's going to work well to light everything so that way I don't have to have separate individual little light boxes. Now, if I need to, I can still pop a little SMD in if I need a certain one to be brighter or a certain section, so we'll see. But I want to try to keep that as limited as possible so that I end up with a nice simple light box that does what I want it to do. And I don't have to worry about all the extra wiring. And this has just one set of red and black wires coming out of it. And I use this thin wire. I got this from Amazon. It's called wire wrapping wire. It's kind of redundant, but I have red and I have black. It's a very thin wire. It is a solid copper wire inside. So I still have to be a little more careful, but... I think it'll be fine as far as just wiring to these. What I can also do is attach that onto the thicker wire that I was looking at once it comes out of the box. All right, but that proof of concept looks like it's gonna work a lot better, which I assume that it would since uh, Luz Udalmeso's pod came out fantastically and that's the method that he used. So I think that's gonna be the best approach to go. All right. All right, so that's going to wrap up this video for now. I will continue working on these, and I'll also be working on the fly and some other projects in the near future. Uh, so stay tuned. Thank you to all my new subscribers, and I will see you the next time.